Uh, I make a video in English again and uh, uh, the topic of this video is um, uh, something about the clock and stopping the clock, something that I already uh, told in my Finnish video uh, a few days ago. So I try to make uh, that video now in English, but of course uh, let the Holy Spirit lead what I speak here if he wants to speak something different or more than in that uh, previous video. So I just let him uh, uh, um, work here. And uh, my uh, topic, uh, as I already said, my topic is the clock. So that's why I have here my clock. So uh, I put put it here so that you can hear the ticking ticking of the clock all the time so that's my topic okay uh, I first I want to pray for, uh, shortly okay so Holy Spirit lead what I say and what I don't say and God give me here for this video now the protection of Jesus' blood. Be my shield. And cover me. Hide me in your hiding place. And God give here peace, your peace and your truth and your love and your presence. And give me everything what I say, what I do, so that I can be here now in your will. And uh, give me also all the words in, in English. And uh, lead all those right people uh, who should listen to this video. So that they find this video and Holy Spirit speak to them through this video as you want to as you wish in Jesus name amen okay so um, this is a bit challenging again because uh, now I have to speak in English and uh, okay anyways uh, uh, Okay, the topic was uh, when God stops the clock or when he stops the time. And what does that mean? And uh, uh, I watched two movies a while ago. And um, okay, uh, actually, yes. Uh, okay, the, the movies, they were Mary Poppins Returns. And then this Disenchanted. They are both Disney's movies. And um, I am talking about them. But before that, uh, I feel that I have to share first something else. So uh, I have published uh, maybe a week ago or something uh, in my YouTube channel. Uh, just a picture from the internet that I found. Uh, and in the picture there was a rainbow uh, which was coming uh, from the heaven uh, it was a really a big rainbow it was coming to the earth and uh, to the traffic sign uh, and in that traffic sign there was a text end only that nothing else I don't know from which country the picture is taken somewhere abroad I guess uh, but it was a traffic sign and the text was only, it was end. And uh, that picture uh, spoke to me or God spoke to me through that picture. And uh, I remembered uh, one sentence that I found in 2015 in summer when I was in, in Germany, in Nuremberg. And uh, there was a 
really big uh, commercial uh, paper or whatever it is in English, but a commercial there in the downtown. And there was a picture. And in that picture, there was a woman. And uh, one sentence which like uh, got me was this in that picture. Das Warten hat ein Ende. That is German. And it means waiting has an end. Waiting has an end. And uh, actually, uh, I want to show you this picture now. It is in my computer, so I, I show it to you just a minute. I uh, turn around this uh, camera. Uh, so here you can see Das Warten hat ein Ende. This is the commercial picture that I found. Okay, so that was that. So that <laughs> you can see the evidence. Okay, so. Okay, so then again we can continue here. Um, okay. And then, uh, uh, I understand, and uh, it is also, this thought is also in the Bible, that every, everything here on the earth and everything that we are experiencing in our lives and what happens here, everything has an end, everything has a date. And... Uh, also, uh, okay, and I think I have to put my glasses now. Uh, okay. Uh, I have now some Bible verses telling about this. Uh, and I think that this is really familiar thing to all of us, this appointed time. So uh, many people, many speakers, they always refer to this Bible verse or they say or they talk about this appointed time so uh, uh, I, 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 I soon read these Bible verses but uh, first I tell you something about this uh, about this sentence waiting has an end uh, because it means that also when you wait for something if God has uh, given you a promise or maybe many promises uh, your waiting has an end you don't have to wait until you die or uh, all the rest rest of your life and and so that your life is just waiting and waiting and waiting and nothing happens that is not true uh, your waiting has an end your waiting has a date God has set the date to your waiting God knows it. God knows it when it is. And uh, so it is also like this appointed time. And I remember I uh, a few years ago, I listened to Karen Wheaton's video. Uh, she has made videos in her Facebook. I think uh, she makes them once in a week. Uh, yes, the name of that video. Uh, uh, video channel or something is uh, Front Porch Friends and uh, in one or of her videos uh, she told about her she had I mean she had a prodigal daughter and when the daughter was away uh, uh, away from God and from God's will and from her children and her husband and family and so on uh, this Karen, the mother, uh, prayed for her daughter every day, I think maybe a little bit over three years or something. She has also uh, written a book from this. Uh, and I, I have that book. Uh, may, uh, yes, uh, the name of the book is Watching the Road. Yes, and now I see it from my bookshelf. <laughs> so the name of the book is Watching the Road. And the writer is Karen Wheaton. So uh, 
she said in one of her of her videos that uh, she had realized or god had spoken to her that her uh, that there there was a date the date that god has set uh, when this uh, deliverance and when this coming back of her daughter happens and and everything what god had promised to her happen will happen and and she was also talking about this this date so because uh, it helps when you have to sometimes we have to wait really long time maybe 10 years 20 years 30 years whatever uh, or maybe it's only one year but anyways when we wait a long time for something uh, it starts to feel like uh, oh is this never gonna end is this never gonna end am I always going to wait for this promise and never gonna see the result or this promise fulfilled but it's gonna uh, full God is gonna fulfill it God is gonna do whatever he has promised so there is a pointed time and uh, that's why the commercial picture that was really uh, amazing what I found there in Nuremberg uh, because the, the text was waiting has an end and um, at that time I also uh, I was waiting for something and I had waited for it already years and years so uh, it was really encouraging to see that uh, God, God was saying that that your waiting has an end there is an end coming there is an end okay so uh we just need perseverance and strength and and encouragement from god and other people so that we can continue our journey until we see the fulfillment of our promises and uh, now i am reading those bible verses appointed time about appointed time that is uh in genesis uh there is one bible verse the uh yes okay just a minute no no uh, okay first this ecclesiastes uh three and one that is the first one yes um just a minute i have written it somewhere here uh, okay it is this one ecclesiastes 3 and 1 there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens okay and then uh, i also read ecclesiastes 3 and 11 he has made everything beautiful in its time he has also set eternity in the human heart yet no one can fathom what god has done from beginning to end okay so god makes everything beautiful in its time you know uh now we have spring but uh i mean I, I i am here in finland uh we have already here some flowers some little flowers growing and popping up but uh the trees still they don't have their leaves they are like bare they are not so beautiful but uh after a few few weeks or something i guess uh, they are they appear the leaves appear and then they start to grow and then the uh, they are they start to bloom and the the trees they they are gonna have all their leaves and 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 it's it's gonna be summer but you know because there, there is a season for everything and for every activity and and God makes everything beautiful in its time so the nature is not like uh, okay some kind of beautiful yes but not so beautiful before the spring before it's time for a spring 
before it's time uh, to bloom and, 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 and grow those flowers and so on. So it is beautiful in its right time when the spring comes and when, when, when it is a springtime, then it is uh, going to be really beautiful. Okay, so this is like a, I don't know if, if that was an, a good example of this, but anyways. So then uh, also, then there was another Bible verse, Genesis 21 and 2. This is about Sarah. So Sarah conceived and bore a son to Abraham in his old age at the appointed time of which God had spoken to him. So that was also at the appointed time. They had to wait, I guess I heard or read somewhere, maybe about 25 years for that child. But anyways, uh, God answered and God fulfilled that promise anyways. Okay, then there is this uh, really famous Bible verse, Habakkuk 2 and 3. Uh, it's new in new in international version. Yes, for the revelation awaits on a appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Okay, there is also this theme end here it speaks of the end and will not prove false though it linger wait for it it will certainly come and will not delay as the revelation awaits and will certainly come also the end will come it will certainly come and it will not delay uh, as it is many times said, God is always on time. I also, uh, I watched one movie, uh, the name of the movie was uh, The Polar Express, and there was this conductor of the train, uh, I think it was Tom Hanks, it, it was like a cartoon kind of a movie, but uh, the voice of the conductor was Tom Hanks, and uh, he had a pocket watch, and Pocket Watch uh, had uh, three or four sectors on it, not uh, numbers as we have in our clocks, but uh, it had some sectors. And then the sectors' names, uh, they were on time, and then also late, and then early. And the fourth sector, you could not see. I took a picture from the movie and actually I posted it uh, in the community page uh, because I, I noticed that now I can post there something too. So I posted it a, a day ago or two days ago or something, uh, The pic this picture. So there you can see it if you want to uh, check the picture. And, and, the, and the hand of the clock uh, was in this picture it was always in this sector uh, of on time. And there were times in this movie when the train was almost late and the, the, the hand of the clock was uh, trying to go to another sector, to this sector late. But uh, it couldn't. It was like magnetism or something. It, it tried to go there but it couldn't. It was always in this sector on time. And God is like that. Uh, the clock was like God's uh, clock. He is never late. He is always on time. And that was really a uh, great picture of that. Okay, I wanted to say this too also. So, okay. So then, other Bible verses. Um, then there is this uh, Ecclesiastes again, 3 and... Um, just a minute. Uh, 3 and uh, 14 and 15. Yes. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. 
God does it so that people will fear him. Whatever is has already been, and what will be has been before, and God will call the past to account. But the this e ESV translation is better. I, I read this Ecclesiastes uh, 3 and 15 again in that another translation. That which is already has been, that which is to be already has been, and God seeks what has been driven away. Also, there is another translation. I think it was New American Standard Bible. And there is a sentence, God seeks what has passed by. So, God seeks what has been driven away, or God seeks what has passed by. And when I was uh, preparing this uh, text now before this video in English, I, I was uh, searching for the Bible verses in English and writing them down and so on. And God spoke to me and, um, of course, remember to test everything. And, and remember that uh, as, as now we have uh, read here, there is a season for everything. And we are all in our own season, in different seasons. And maybe this word is not now for you. Maybe it's later for you. But... Uh, you have to ask it from God if this word is now for you, if this uh, whatever I speak here is, is for you or, or is it maybe then later or something. Okay, so uh, God was speaking to me uh, about this sentence, God seeks what has been driven away. And uh, I got the thought or idea of the prodigals because they are like uh, they have been driven away kind of they have been driven away but God seeks what has been driven away or what is lost God seeks what has passed by and uh, also I uh, I wrote it down here Yes, God will compensate you for the things that passed you by. Because first, God seeks what has passed by. And maybe uh, you have waited for something or some, some promises God has promised to you, maybe years and years and, and you think that you have lost time, maybe you think that you have lost your youth or your health already, maybe you think that now it's too late for this or that, maybe it's too late for marriage, too late for children, too late for this idea, too late to start over, too late to, to whatever, you know, and, uh, but God, seeks what has passed by and he will compensate you for the things that passed you by your time your youth there is uh, this bible verse about that just a minute uh, it is uh, in this psalm 103 verses 2 to 5 just a minute where it is here praise the lord my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles your youth is renewed like the eagles these are all promises here in the bible then maybe uh, you have uh, lost chances or opportunities or people during this waiting period or friends 
or comfort, love, healing, your joy, your peace, your family, your support, children, and so on and so on. Everything that you have lost. Everything, all those things that passed you by. Because there is also a, about this healing, uh, there is also one Bible verse. But yes, uh, God is going to uh, restore them. God is going to compensate you for those things. God is going to pay you back. He's going to restore all and more. He's going to give you everything back, all back and more. He's going to give you double portion. Uh, these uh, thoughts are all in the Bible. So, uh, yes, about this, this healing, that the healing is is the children's bread. Uh, Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. And uh, he is referring to the healing here. And then there is this Bible verse, Isaiah 53 and 5 by his wounds we are healed so the, the bible is full of these promises uh, which belong to us if we just take them and receive them and uh, that's why i was just uh, saying all those possibilities that what you think that and and you feel that you have lost or those things that have uh, passed you by and then God is going to restore them. And uh, so that's why it doesn't matter uh, if you have to wait for something for a long time. Uh, also, uh, Sarah's uh, youth was renewed because first uh, she was over 90 years old. And of course, Abraham was old, even older and uh, Sarah couldn't conceive uh, children she was too old for that so what God did she just renewed her youth so that she could have a child and she got a child then so if God has done that to somebody else in the Bible he can do it for you too so uh, okay so then uh, okay um, Okay, then I think that yes, and 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 and, and I also want to uh, add something to this. God seeks what has been driven away. Um, when the thought came to my mind about these prodigals, so they are also they are like lost sons and daughters they are lost children and they have been driven away but god is gonna find them he's he's gonna seek them he's gonna seek them and they are coming back so uh that is also something what what i wanted to say okay so then mm, Okay, and God is not going to answer to our prayers too late, but also not too early. Because he, there are many times there are processes that are going on and uh, God is uh, moving and, uh, and he is working in many other people too, not only in you. And not only for, if you are praying for somebody else or if you are praying for a prodigal, not only in that prodigal, but God is also working in you uh, when you are waiting for the answer. Or also other people uh, who are connected with this prodigal or who are connected with you too. So uh, God is always uh, working in a larger uh, scale or how do you say it in English? But in, in uh, he has the bigger picture that we don't have and we can't see uh, in so large 
Um, okay. We can't see that large picture that he sees. We, we only see uh, the smaller picture and, uh, and um, but he is God and he sees everything and he knows what he is doing. Okay, so then uh, now I am talking about these, uh, these movies because uh, uh, the theme, one theme anyways, in both of the movies was uh, stopping the clock. And that was really amazing because uh, I felt, felt that I have to watch these movies and uh, the other one I had seen before, the other one I hadn't. And I, I didn't know at all that in both movies there was this clock theme. I didn't know that in beforehand. But when I watched them, then I started to see that yeah, there is a theme here. God is trying to talk something. And this is now about this theme that God stops the clock or God stops the time. And uh, I first, I tell you something, not everything, but I tell you something about these movies or this uh, particular scene where this clock thing happens. And I have also uh, published in my YouTube channel before this video, I published a few video clipses or uh, yes from from the both of the movies from those scenes if you are interested in so then you can yourself you can see those scenes okay so first uh, about this um, about this movie this enchanted uh, okay there is uh, the situation is this I mean it, it is in the end of the movie situation is this there is this uh, Giselle she is the, the main character the princess but she lives uh, in the modern world as we live uh, but she has made a wrong wish earlier and because of that uh, it there becomes a spell or something and the whole town where she lives and her family lives uh, uh, it, it goes under this spell and the spell is going to become permanent uh, after a few days and at the at the midnight when the clock uh, strikes 12 and uh, that is a really interesting that uh, the time is again this 12 o'clock in the midnight okay so uh, and they have to try to reverse the spell before that or end the spell uh, then uh, everything can be saved the whole town all the people there and their family but if they don't then everything is gonna be destroyed uh, at the when the clock strikes 12 in the midnight okay so now then there are some people who are trying to uh, uh, stop this and there are two men I, I, they are dressed like two knights or actually I think the, the other one was a prince and the other one was just an ordinary man but I think they were dressed like two knights and they had their swords with them of course. And uh, when, when they, all, the, all those people, they didn't know what to do, who were, who were trying to stop the spell and stop the time and, 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 and save everything. Uh, they didn't know what to do. Then those men, they, uh, uh, they got an idea that, hey, we can, we can stop the clock. If we stop the clock, then the spell doesn't uh, become permanent and those uh, other people who are trying to prevent this they still have time because at this moment uh, I think there was only one minute left one minute left only one minute until the clock was gonna be 12 in the midnight and um, and then 
uh, yes, uh, the name of the men, they were Robert and Tyson, I guess. Here, I have written them here. And then they run to the top of the clock tower, these two men, to delay the final chime. And they strike their swords into the clockwork, and those big clock wheels, they stop. And so they stopped time at the last minute. And they stopped the evil plans of the enemy with their swords. And this was really amazing, this scene, uh, because uh, I started to think that these swords are like the word of God. And those two men, they were like believers, like we believers. Uh, and our prayers is like, and God's word is like those swords. Uh, if we are praying and if we are using God's own word, we are using our swords, swords and uh, it is like this as what they, these two men did. In that way, we strike our swords into the clockwork, into the clockwork, and those big clock wheels of enemy stop. Or actually, or or then you can also think that when the when the clock stops, you get more time to reverse uh, the evil plans of the enemy. And when we pray, the prayer is a weapon, and also this this word of God. And there is this really famous uh, Bible verse again about this uh, God's word being a sword. And it's in Hebrews 4, just a minute, I have written it somewhere. Yes, here, Hebrews 4, uh, from 12 to 13. For the word of God is alive and active, uh, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart and then also the the next verse is really really good i i want to read it too nothing in all creation is hidden from god's sight everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account okay so God sees everything and his word is alive and active and it is sharper than any double-edged sword. And it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. And it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. We have this kind of weapon, we have this kind of sword in our hands when we if we are using it so uh so actually yes they stop the clock they stop the time those two men and that in that way uh, they caught more time they caught more time and it was in the final minute at the final moment so i mean at last minute yes okay and then uh, i also uh published uh a, few, a little while ago uh, another video in English and uh, the name of the video is uh, just a minute break here to open up and uh, in that video where I just speak these prophetic words uh, there was these sentences and I read them again here I have stopped the clock for you so that the evil plans of the enemy won't succeed and that you still have time to recover and get all that has been promised to you. Those promises are still here. They are still here. Don't worry. I am keeping them and you safe. 
okay this is the part i wanted to read there was this clock theme already there so okay uh and then but of course test everything uh then um okay this is really uh that's why it takes time for me to find the right things here because uh I have text here now in Finnish and also in English and they are all mixed up here so I just uh, try to find the English verses and English text uh, what I have written here uh, okay um, yes uh, I think that I yes now I I, I want to talk about the other movie yes uh, in the other movie Mary Poppins returns there is this Mary Poppins, uh, and she is that magical uh, nanny, nanny or something, and she comes to this uh, Banks family and um, takes care of the children and also makes a few like miracles and and helps the whole family. And then uh, there was also something that uh, the family had to they had to uh, take some um, official paper to the director of the bank and that that bank director he was an evil man and the, this bank's family they had to uh, take a really significant paper really uh, something really uh, really important to this bank director and if they take that in time and and the time limit was again it was before the midnight before the clock strikes 12 in the midnight before big ben uh strikes 12 because this happens in london and uh then the Direct director of the bank sits in his office with his uh, uh, minions or dominions. How how do you say it? With 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 the two other evil men, and they are waiting, uh, and and they have also tried to prevent the family in in every way they could. They tried to prevent this to happen because they didn't want them. Uh, to get their house saved because uh, their house was in danger uh they were they were going to lose it to the bank if they uh hadn't uh taken this really important paper to this bank before the midnight okay so uh then they are trying this and they are trying to find the paper and then they finally they find it and uh, at this moment uh, the time was already, they had only, I think, about seven or ten minutes left. It was seven or ten minutes before midnight. And they had to still travel or walk. I think they went by, by the bicycle. They went uh, to the office of the bank manager or director. And, uh, and <laughs> it was so, they were so in hurry. And they almost... Uh, uh how do you say it um got there in time or actually uh they this this is the thing mary poppins had to help them because they didn't have enough time anymore and uh, uh i don't now tell all the details but one detail is that then in the end uh mary poppins she flew in the air uh to the to the uh, clock tower and it was this big ben and um, it was i think it was only one minute left there also only one minute or a few minutes or something and then the mary poppins she uh turned how do you say it i have written it somewhere here mm. yes she moves the other clock hand backwards because a clock has two hands uh, so she moves the other clock hand backward backwards so that they 
got five minutes more five minutes more and now the the time was like five minutes before the midnight and 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 this <laughs> talk to me this scene uh, it is like god god can do things like this and he is doing things like this also in our lives he can turn the clock backwards and he can also stop the whole clock he can stop the clock he can reset the time but he can also move the clock backwards and uh, now they got enough time to finish their task and then they won and the evil didn't won and the evil didn't succeed in this movie and uh, those people and this family they got uh, their their house back and everything was was good in the end uh, but but also there was also one funny detail in this movie that this big ben in this movie uh, it was actually late it was no no not late it was uh the clock it was promoting it was promoting it was i think it was five minutes early uh, because there was one captain in this movie and he had his own clock and i think th that his clock was on time and uh he always he was really annoyed and he was really angry when he already he always he heard the big pen strike you know what whatever it's it struck and uh it was always like five minutes too early and then uh he had a kind of a now i don't know the word but it, he had this captain had uh, a gun or something and his servant always like uh, shot the gun or something uh, or gunning ball or something I don't know the word in English but uh, at the right time and then the big pen uh, struck at the wrong time but now when Mary Poppins moved the the clock hand actually the time or the clock now it was on right time now it was on right time so it is like uh, our enemy devil has tried to uh, hasten the time or he has tried to to move the clock hand forward and uh, he has tried to hurry uh, the time or his plan so that he would succeed and or his plans his evil plans would succeed but god is going to do this he's gonna move the clock hand backwards and he's gonna put the clock to the to the right time he's gonna set it into the right time and god's time is always right god's time he's always on time and his time is always right so okay test this but uh i believe this and then uh also you can you can see this what god is doing in your own life in that way that you start to for example see that uh, oh uh some things happen again in your life maybe same things that happened 20 years ago or maybe some people uh, that you met 10 years ago they come into your life again or maybe you had some traumas or or, uh, or really bad situations in your life earlier and then now somehow not the same situations but uh, same kind of situations come into your life now but now you see not those evil things again but you see this time restoration of God on these things or these situations or God wants to uh, send you restoration so that you can be healed uh, in those parts of your heart and in those situations that have wounded you in the past. 
and now God is uh, uh, leading you in your life, in your normal, normal uh, everyday life, so that now you see that, well, this is amazing. Uh, how is this possible that those things that happened in another way earlier in my past, now they are happening all the time in another way, not on the way they happened in my past, but now they are happening in another way and it's a positive way and it is also a restoring way so that you get more, not only uh, recompense or or restoration, but you get like, like this double for your trouble. You get double, you get a double joy, double peace, double restoration, uh, double Okay, whatever you can, you can, you, you name it. So, um, for example, I just, uh, I think it was a few days ago, or was it yesterday? Uh, I saw somebody, somebody was posting in her YouTube uh, community community page. She was posting that uh, that somebody had uh, sent her this sentence that. Uh, ask or or wait for the double from the Lord or something like this double and uh, and the date was uh, 22nd of this month so the the date was also 2 to 22nd of uh, uh, April and uh, okay when I saw that posting uh, I I immediately I just uh, I said to God in my mind, I said that, okay, well, uh, if, if she can do it, I can do it. And then I asked, please, God, give me two this and this, two of this and this. And, and then I was just saying some things, or as I said, double. And then I, I got a joy from that. And it was really amazing when I came home that night from the work, uh, I was walking. And then suddenly I saw, uh, I saw two feathers on the ground and, and okay, I like feathers. And when I see them, I usually, I collect them and I, I, I take them home with me. And, and I have here at my home, a few with feathers because I like them. And, uh, but now it was really, I think it was uh, stunning because there was not only one feather because I had asked double or two, so there were two feathers. And it was really, it looked funny actually. I would have understood one feather, but there were two. And I, I think it was like a confirmation from God that yes, this is what I do and this is what I can do. And now I show you these feathers. They are here. I have put them here. I have here a bird's nest. And th these are the two feathers. These two. Yes, here you, you can see. And because I found those two feathers, I added, uh, I have here like, of course, these are not real birds, eggs, but uh, now I put there four because it's two times double. <laughs> I had three eggs here first, but I, I because I, I want to believe in this, that he gives me double for my trouble. He gives me double. Okay, so here are the two feathers. Two feathers. This is the evidence. Okay, so, okay. This is also what I wanted, or actually, I was not going to show that to you, but uh, I think this was uh, a guidance of the Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, and then, why God stops the clock? What is the reason for that? And I asked that from God a few days ago, or actually, when I was uh, doing this Finnish video of this topic. And, and he said to me, so that you get time to recover. And that was really beautiful. So that you get time to recover. That's the reason. Of course, there can be other reasons why God stops 
the clock. But now here, when I was asking, and, and this is now related to my message here or what I am trying to share here. Okay, so then I got this uh, Bible verse, Revelation 21, 5 to 6. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Here it is all again, they are talking about the end. The beginning and the end. Uh, God was the beginning of your promise. He gave you that promise, what, what he gave to you. And he is also the end of that promise. And he is also the end of your waiting for that promise. And uh, he is making everything new. And if he's making everything new, it means everything. Everything. So don't be surprised if, if you start to see and, and wonder, oh, this is so different than before, because it's new. It, the reason is it's new. Also, your, uh, how you see things, how you do things, how you talk, how you move, how, how you uh, wear your clothes or whatever. Uh, it, it means everything. It means everything. New relationships, new family, new friends, new, new, uh, whatever, new love, new, everything is going to be new. I don't mean that uh, if God has uh, promised you, for example, restoration of your marriage, I don't mean that he's going to give you another person or another marriage. He's going to give you totally new marriage with that person that is meant for you with this one that he's he has talked about so but if everything is new it is not the same as before if he's gonna restore your marriage if you are married uh your marriage is gonna look like new marriage everything in your marriage is gonna look like new it's not gonna be old anymore the way he treats you or she treats you it's gonna be new the way he loves you or she loves you, it's going to be new. The words that he's going to use or she's going to use, they are going to be new. Everything is going to be new. So there is our hope there. Also, this also is related to the prodigals. If you are waiting for your prodigal to come home, your daughter, your son, your spouse, your friend, your dear one, loved ones, or whatever uh god is gonna do he's do, he's he is making everything new in their lives too and also he says here already it is done i mean it's done already it's done and he is the beginning and the end and it is not over until he says it's over because he is the beginning and the end he is the alpha and the omega and he's making everything new and um okay and then um there was this uh uh okay uh, yes and then other uh there are other uh stories and examples of time or when God has kind of a stopped the time or clock in the Bible or God has been operating with time and uh, I think that I don't read them now but I just uh, tell you where you can find them yourself if you want to re read them and um, the places Bible verses are Isaiah 38 and there there is this Hezekiah and uh, he was uh, dying he was really sick and uh, 
God sent a prophet to him to say that you're gonna die but just prepare and whatever and he he uh, Hezekiah he got really depressed and he cried and uh, and he was talking to God and I think that he was asking uh, that he sh d doesn't have to die and then God answered him and sent the prophet back and uh, he said that God will add and God did that too God added 15 years to his life and the sign for that so that uh, he's gonna get healed and not die and he's gonna have 15 more years uh, the actually yes I have to read something here uh, just a minute it's uh, Isaiah uh, 38 okay oh, actually I feel I, I have to read this okay Okay, I read this. Okay. Uh, in those days, Hezekiah beca became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order, because you are going to die. You will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face to the, wa to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Go and tell Hezekiah, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life and I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city. This is the Lord's sign to you that the Lord will do what he has promised. Oh, this is great. I didn't know that there was this verse. Lord will do what he has promised. This is what I have, I have been speaking here. Lord will do what he has promised. I will make the shadow cast by the sun go back the, the ten steps it has gone down on the stairway of Ahaz. So the sunlight went back the ten steps it had gone down. Actually, uh, I, I, I have understood that uh, that was uh, the clock in that time, like a sun clock or some, I don't know the word in English, but that kind of a clock uh, that you can see the time with uh, how the sunlight goes or the shadow. How, how it goes there and uh, now actually this is just what I have been speaking uh, but the clock was only different so that like the the shadow goes backwards 10 steps just as in these movies the clock uh, or another movie actually not in, in this this another movie the clock was stopped totally, but in another movie, in this Mary Poppins Returns, there the clock was uh, like uh, the time was, uh, or the clock hand was turned backwards. So they got more minutes. They got uh, five minutes more or something. Uh, so this is, okay, I, I read this again. This is the Lord's sign to you, that the Lord will do what he has promised. I will make the shadow cast by the sun go back the ten steps it has gone down on the stairway of Ahaz. So the sunlight went back the ten steps it had gone down. 
Okay. Okay. Yes. And then I think that... Yes, and then there, there, there is a writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, after his illness and recovery. And then there is like a praise or worship song and what he was uh, uh, like praising and worshipping God. Yes, the, for example, in the verse, actually in the verse uh, 16, he says here, you restored me to health and let me live. Surely, and, the, and the more, surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. In your love, you kept me from the pit of destruction. You have put all my sins behind your back. For the grave cannot praise you, death cannot sing your praise. Those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your faithfulness. The living, the living, they praise you as I am doing today. Fathers tell their children about your faithfulness. The Lord will save me and we will sing with stringed instruments all the days of our lives in the temple of the Lord. This is really, really great. This is really great. Okay, it was good that God said that. Read, read the whole whole thing. Okay, because I then I found these other things here. So, okay, that was that. And then uh, there is also another story in Joshua 10. The sun, the sun stands still. And actually, just a minute... Um, Because, of course, uh, in this uh, another story too, in this Hezekiah story, when this uh, sun clock, uh, something changed there, and the shadow shifted ten steps backwards. It means that God uh, did something to planets and sun and, 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 and so on. Somebody who knows better these things could explain this better. But... Uh, God was uh, moving and doing something uh, uh, in the uh, in the universe, and He was uh, moving planets uh, because of this man and because of his prayer and his wish to just uh, live and not die. So uh, God is really great and He's really loving, and He can. I mean, it's amazing how He answers to our prayers. He doesn't have to, but uh, many times, and there are also other stories in the Bible, when how God answers to the people who, who asked some things from him. For example, it was Abraham who asked God not to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Or I don't know in the, this in English. It's in Finnish, it's Sodoma, Gomorrah. I don't know the words in English, but these two cities who were really sinful and uh, and Abraham asked that would you save those cities if you find uh, 20 I don't remember those amounts but maybe or numbers 20 people 10 people eight people and and he was uh, suggesting uh, other and other numbers and then God said every time that if I find that amount of righteous people there i don't re destroy that city and i think it is really it's actually heartbreaking to see that god cares so much and uh, many times he just waits for somebody to pray and we don't have many things because we we haven't prayed we haven't asked him The reason is that 
not that he doesn't want to give us or that he he wants to give us and he wants to answer us but sometimes some things we don't have because we have not asked him and i am crying because i feel that he's touching me and because i see how much he loves again i see again in this example how much he loves he really cares we often we think that he doesn't care but he cares a lot and he cares about those tiny details of your life that you think that he has not seen but he has seen everything and he has seen every tiny detail of your life and he cares and just as he cares about the beginning of the things he cares about the end of the things and when the end comes the end of the matters and and the those promises fulfilled our fulfillment of the promises when they come he's the one who he who rejoices with you and he's sending those answers straight from his heart he's sending those prayer answers from his heart to your heart and sometimes he has to prepare our hearts so that we can receive what he is sending to us so that we those things they don't pass by as our as some things in our past they passed by or we passed by them and we missed missed them we lost them but now he's working in us and in our hearts and he's preparing our hearts to receive to receive his love and all those answers he is sending to us okay i i i feel that was a prophetic word to somebody or some people but test everything and, uh, okay the sun stands still the story of joshua uh it was uh, in the verses uh, from 5 to 15 And uh, but I don't read everything, just uh, a part. Okay, from verse 7. So Joshua marched up from Gilgal with his entire army, including all the best fighting men. The Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. After an all-night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. The Lord threw them into confusion before Israel, who defeated them in a great victory at Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road, going up to Beth Horon, and cut them down all the way to Azekah and Makedah. As they fled before Israel on the road down from Beth Horon to Azekah, the Lord hurled large hailstones down on them from the sky, and more of them died from the hailstones than were killed by the swords of the Israelites. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, O sun, stand still over Gibeon, O moon, over the valley of Ayalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nation avenged itself on its enemies. 
as it is written in the book of Yashar. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. So they got a full day, an ex a full extra day. There has never been a day like it before or since, a day when the Lord listened to a man. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Then Joshua returned with all Israel to the camp at Gilgal. So this is the story. So God, again, he moved planets. And it was because of one man's prayer. So uh, it is really amazing. And then, okay, about this time, this one famous Bible verse, 1 Peter 5 and 10. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, maybe you are now suffering and waiting, will, but after you have suffered a little while, uh, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. And in a other translation, it is, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. So he's gonna settle you, establish you, perfect you, strengthen you. He's gonna make you strong and firm and steadfast and he will himself restore you. He will himself restore you. Okay. And, uh, okay. And also those lost things, things that you think that you have lost, they are actually not lost, they are just hidden. Uh, that, that, uh, was that thought was also in the movie Mary Poppins Returns. Mary Poppins said that nothing is lost, it is only hidden or something like this. And uh, I have also made uh, a video of my own. It, it is in my older videos in YouTube. Uh, and uh, the name of the video is Lost Not Gone. And that was from another movie. And the, the idea is the same, that uh, uh, nothing is lost. No, I mean, uh, something can be lost, but it is not gone. Something can be lost, so you just don't find it, but it doesn't mean that it's gone. It's not gone. And, uh, and this is uh, the Bible verse that I already uh, read to you, was this really beautiful place that, uh, just a minute, just a minute, uh, it is, uh, I think it is, uh, it was this Ecclesiastes, I think it has to be here. Yes, here. Uh, God seeks what has passed by. Yes. God seeks what has passed by. So... Okay, now I found it. Yes. That which is already has been. That which is to be already has been. And God seeks what has been driven away 
or another translation God seeks what what has passed by so if you feel and you think that you have lost something or you have lost people or you have lost time you have lost something that belonged to you somebody has stolen it from you or something ha has been lost something is lost so just remember that uh, it is not lost or, it, or it's just lost but not gone you have not uh, I mean I don't know the word in English but uh, okay the idea is that God is seeking all that is lost or he's seeking or what has passed by yes that was the idea so God knows where all those lost or hidden things where they are and God's gonna bring them back to you and also he's gonna make all things new and uh, then okay then I have uh, still one Bible verse and, and, and please remember test everything and uh, but I have still one Bible verse and when I, uh, I read it read it this is also a promise and it, it talks about Sun and moon and as I already uh, uh, told you about this Joshua uh, the Sun was never setting you know the sun was just shining in the middle of the sky all the day so uh this is really beautiful bible verse it is from isaiah 60 and 20 and this is contemporary english version and i i read it soon but uh it tells about this sun and moon that the lord will be your your uh moon and your sun and so you don't need anything else and uh, the Lord is the Sun that never sets or moon that never goes down and so so God is gonna be our light forever this is really really beautiful place and also it uh, uh, talks about this end also something is gonna end so I read it soon but just a minute set or your moon go down I the Lord will be your everlasting light and your days of sorrow will come to an end what God has promised to you he's gonna do God bless you